Today on Com Talk, we're talking about Tron Legacy because uh, Celeste hasn't seen it, basically. Woohoo! Glicks, what is going on? We are receiving a signal from a new area on the planet Geekery. All right, let's see what the planet has for us today. Opening comes in three, two, one. <laughs> Hello, Devoted Geeks, and welcome to episode 110 of Com Talk by Geek Devotion, the show for Devoted Geeks who are devoted to letting you know that you are loved. I'm Dallas. I'm so glad you hit the play button, whether you're listening on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, or Spotify, wherever you find this. Uh, thank you so much for being part of our podcast. With me is the beautiful, talented, part-time redhead, Celeste. <laughs> Just telling all my secrets. <laughs> How are you, babe? I'm good. Good. Okay, Celeste. So... Uh, this is episode 110. Mm-hmm. Lots of stuff going on. Yep. Um, we've had a lot happen since the last time we recorded a podcast. Yeah, we have. What What was our last podcast? Was our, it GeekCon? It was our GeekCon episode. Yeah. And so we've had a lot going on. A lot of things happening. Um, in this time frame, we have um, basically just done everything in the world. <laughs> everything. everything. Everything in the world. Right. How are you doing today? Um, I'm good. Yeah. You, you kind of already asked that. I know. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we're, we're talking about Tron. Yeah. Now, we, we talked about the original Tron several years ago. Several years ago. And um, a couple weeks ago, we had dropped a lost file mm-hmm. of Tron where we reviewed Tron. Right. And uh, kind of sparked up some, some thoughts, some memories. And I was like, we never went back because we talked about it in the episode. We should go back and watch this. Yeah. We should watch the second well, end. That was kind of the point of us watching the first one mm-hmm. was because I am i don't like to watch things out of order if they are directly connected. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I have to watch the original before we can watch the new one. Right. And the new one's no longer new. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, the new, to be fair, the new one wasn't new when we originally watched Tron to begin with a couple of years ago. True. Like Tron, the, the new one came out in 2010. True. It was 2017 when we did that original episode. True. 2017. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's crazy. So, um, so we watched it. We enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. It was a fun episode. It was a fun movie. It was. So we watched the original, the, the new Tron, Tron Legacy, which is a sequel. Uh, which, if you're unfamiliar with it, let me uh, read the IMDb description of it for you folks. The son of a virtual world designer goes looking for his father and ends up inside the digital world that his father designed. He meets his father, father's corrupted creation, a unique ally who was born inside the digital world or in a unique ally. Okay. So that was the, the description. Right. I feel like it was super vague. Super vague. <laughs> so, um, like I said, this is the sequel. Um, going into the sequel, Mm -hmm. what were your expectations? So because it had been so long, I really didn't have a lot of expectations because for some reason in my brain, I was confusing Tron and Blade Runner. (laughs) Like my brain was mashing the two of those together. So... I really didn't have a ton of expectations. I heard it was good. I've mm-hmm. listened to the soundtrack a lot because it's on my um, my instrumentals uh, Pandora playlist. Because it's done by Daft Punk. Because it's done by Daft Punk. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> rest in peace, Daft Punk. <laughs> um, but, so, I didn't have a ton of expectation necessarily. Right. It was... Me going into it, I I expected it to be better than the original one. Well, now, yeah. I'm a fan of the original one. I grew up on the original one. Um, I appreciate being a just a kid who's always been into computers and stuff like that. I always like the concept of being in the computer world, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, so, but seeing the previews of it, I'm like, this looks like it's going to be fun. This looks yeah. like it could be something really, really cool. Now, you had seen it before, yes? I had seen it before. And um, I was looking forward to going to revisiting the film itself. Yeah. So, um, so your expectations were just kind of like, oh, what's well, whatever, right? Right. Mine were like, let's go. 
Yes. Even though I've already seen it before, because I remember liking it. Now, I know a lot of people did not like it. I feel like it fell flat for some folks. I don't remember. I think it did. Yeah. I don't think it was well received. Mm-hmm. Which is sad to me. And I'm not sure. I said I'm not sure. There were some weird parts to it. Yeah. But we got to remember, like, you have Jeff Bridges in it. Being it, Jeff Bridges. Being Jeff Bridges. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have uh, the kid who played Sam. It was uh, Garrett Hedlund. Headland, yeah, Headland. Which, to be honest, I've never seen any of their movies he's done before, ever seen anything he's ever been in before, and I'm not sure that this film actually helped his career. Have, do you have you ever seen this kid before? Um, let me look him up on IMDb real fast. Okay, like he did movies like Dirt Music, Dreamland. I don't know. I've never seen any of these things, and to me, this is the pro. I mean, so maybe some of these were bigger movies. But I think Tron Legacy was the biggest movie that he's ever done, in my opinion. Just going to, well, it was an Aragon. That doesn't help. No. That doesn't help at all. At all. <laughs> Does not help. He at was in all. Friday Night Lights. Ooh. Ooh. I mean, that that's a big movie for some folks. It, it had an audience. Yep. So I think Tron Legacy might have been the biggest thing he's ever done. Pan. Hmm? He was in Pan. That was a pretty big one. Pan? Yeah. Like Pan's Labyrinth? No, just Pan. Oh, okay. It's a, it was, I say it was big. It was a movie about Peter Pan and he plays Hook. Oh, that Pan. Yeah. I, I didn't see that one. I haven't seen it, but I remember hearing about it. Right. Um. So he's been, he's worked pretty steadily. Yeah. I just don't think I've seen anything. And then you have Olivia Wilde who, like, I'm going through her. I don't think I've seen most of the, anything that is in her in her back catalog. What she's done, I've but seen I remember her. her. Like I remember her in the Lazarus Effect. I remember watching that movie, but I just go and I don't like. You seem like the bigger actress to me than what I'm seeing here. I've seen her in something, and I can't think of it right now. I'm looking up her stuff. She was in Time. I remember that. I don't. I hadn't seen that one. That was the one with um, what was his name? Um, the singer, um, Justin Timberlake, where ever, where they replaced world currency with like time, like to live. Oh. Yeah, she was in that one, and then she was in she was not a good movie, but she was in Cowboy and Aliens, which I thought was fun. <laughs> I enjoyed that one. <laughs> um, she looks like the girl who was in that show with the machine. What? Do you know what I'm talking about? You and your mom watched it. The girl with the show with the machine. She and the machine were linked up and like she, everyone thought she was crazy except for the guy who made the machine. And then they had to like the machine. Jesus was in it. Uh, Jesus was in it? <laughs> Jim Caviezel. <laughs> Persons of an unknown? Maybe. <laughs> Persons of interest was it? I think it was persons of interest. I don't know. I'm gonna look it up. It doesn't say she, she was, was in, in there, but she, she looks. She, she looks like that actress. Yeah, persons of interest. She also looks like um, the girl who played River in Firefly. Mm. I can kind of see that. Maybe person of interest is not right because I'm not seeing the actors that I would think of. Yeah, that, that's a wrong show. All right. But you know what I'm talking about. I know about. what you're talking about. Has no. the squirrel little guy with the little glasses. Squirrel little guy. <laughs> All right. It was a CBS show. It was a CBS show. <laughs> All right. So what did you like about this movie? I really liked the music. Yeah. I mean, I liked the music before I went in. Mm-hmm. Um, I liked that there were several callbacks. Yeah. Like, as I'm watching the movie, I'm remembering things from the first movie. Mm-hmm. So there were several, like, you could definitely watch it without having seen the first one mm-hmm. because they explain enough. But there were definitely some callbacks that you would have missed had you not seen it. Yeah. Um, I like Jeff Bridges. He's just a fun dude to me. <laughs> he is the dude. I still haven't seen that one. <laughs> but like I didn't so much like Escape from New York cuz we still haven't finished that because I kept falling asleep. He wasn't in that. That wasn't him. No, that's Kurt Russell. <laughs> that was Kurt Russell. They're the same person, aren't they? <laughs> Kurt Russell. Is that the same as Jeff Bridges? 
<laughs> at all. I mean, that was Kurt Russell. Same era. Oh my gosh. What was Jeff Bridges in then? Uh, he was in R.I.P.D., which doesn't help you. No. He was in the original Tron. Uh, Crazy Heart. I don't know if you ever saw that one. I don't think I did. Uh, the Men Who Stare at Goats. I, I purposefully didn't watch that one. <laughs> he was an Iron Man. He played Obadiah. Oh, I know that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he was in Sea Biscuit. Uh, K Pax. That was a weird movie. Oh, he was in Seventh Son. Mm-hmm. Oh, he was the Giver. Yes. He was in The Giver. Yes, he was. Which, again, <laughs> it's the same role. Pretty much. <laughs> I mean, he's, he plays the same character. He was Wild Bill. Um, just go back through his his history that he has here. Um, I don't know. He's done a lot. I mean, he's he's a he's been around for quite a while, Celeste. He, <laughs> he's not. He's, he's not the Kurt, Kurt Russell. Russell. <laughs> <laughs> they do kind of look alike. He though. was in the Last Unicorn. I didn't realize that. I haven't seen that one. Uh, he was in a movie called Stick It, which I thoroughly enjoyed because it was about gymnastics. Right. So now that you know who he is, <laughs> do, do you still like him <laughs> in this film? I mean, yeah. <laughs> I just, he was, he was real chill, mm-hmm. real, hey, it's whatever, man. Yeah. Like it, it was a fun character and it was fitting because having supposedly been stuck in a computer since the 80s, it made sense for him to still act like he was in the 80s. Right. So yeah. I don't know if that's just Kurt Russell's normal, not Kurt Russell, Jeff Bridges' normal personality. If he's just like, yeah, man, it's cool. It's whatever. Right. Like straight out of the 80s and he's just never aged. Got his, out of it. <laughs> aged his vernacular <laughs> um, and the way he acts. But yeah, I appreciated that touch, even if it wasn't on purpose. Yeah. He definitely is a... Jeff Bridges' character um, really does bridge it back to the original series. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have the references to the original series. You have references to Tron. You see different... And I appreciate how they upgraded everything. Yeah. Like, and, you know, you, you could go, well, but why is it so different? Well, it's different because it's a different system. Mm-hmm. They recreated the entire network. And they explained that. Yeah, and they made it better. They made it cleaner fresher which is why you didn't have the kind of the awkwardness of the original world Mm -hmm. but at the same time it was what was it um it was while it was it was clean but it was it was its own like it was its own thing and i appreciated that Mm -hmm. and i i like the the clean slick darker design i think it works for yeah what they're going for um so I don't know, I enjoyed it. I, specifically, like I said, I, I really enjoyed the graphics. Yes. There was there is a there is a magic to the original Tron with the graphics because it is such a grittiness to the original graphics. Right. Because they were making it up as they went. This was definitely more CG'd, it was cleaner, oh, yeah. it was fresher. Well, but if you think about it, it makes sense because the original movie, when it was set, that was a lot of what computers looked oh, like. Yeah. You didn't have the nice, clean thing. I mean, you were still entering codes into DOS to get your OS to start up. I, I was talking to somebody when this movie came out, and they were talking about comparing the two. And they said, look at Tron as a Commodore 64, and then look at Tron Legacy as a brand new computer running at the time brand new windows 7 yeah like that's how you would compare it you're like that makes sense it does and so the having it be so much cleaner made a lot of sense to Mm -hmm. me i thought the movie was funnier also than the original one like the humor hit me i don't know if that's a a difference of like 80s humor versus today's humor 80s children's humor versus today's humor i don't think they were trying to be funny with the original one Mm. Like, I think it was meant to be one of Disney's more serious movies. You know, they'd have those where they're like, it's a kid's movie, but it's serious. So it's for older kids. Right. Um, So I don't think they were necessarily trying to be funny Mm -hmm. with it as much as they were just trying to tell a good story. Um, And there was some humor. I remember laughing. But 
it definitely wasn't as funny as this one. And then you just have the difference of storytelling. Yeah. Like 2010 humor is much different than 80s humor. Mm -hmm. Totally get that. Totally get that. Overall, like I said, I think it's a better film in a lot of ways than the first one. Um, It's missing the magic of the first one because it's by 2010, we had so many sci-fi films Mm -hmm. in the computer. The Matrix was already out. You had all these things that were already out there and working for you. Uh, so it was different. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to look up who did the uh, the screenplay. It was done by Edward Kitsis, who worked on Lost. Oh. Once Upon a Time. Oh. Uh, the Birds of Prey series. That doesn't help him. Oh. <laughs> he did a lot of the Once Upon a Time stuff, though. The Once Upon a Time series was very well written mm-hmm. until probably i don't know season six or seven Mm -hmm. like it it started to get to the point where it's like okay guys this should be done Mm -hmm. i mean he's a talented guy i mean a lot of the shows he's watched or he he's worked on were big shows and so now that i'm seeing what he's done i can see that stuff working into it but overall um i liked what i saw i think there were a lot of great points to it and uh yeah i think that's that's all we got to say about that yeah so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a quick break uh, com talk is part of the culture box network a network of podcasters and entertainers who are unpacking truth through story comedy and geekery and so we're gonna take a quick commercial break what's gonna highlight one of our fellow network friends in a world where live action movies reign supreme. Two awesome dudes are keeping things animated. If you want to hear a couple of animation nerds gush about the movies they love, then hop, run, or fly on over to The Cellcast. Available on most podcast platforms. All right, we're back, and uh, we're going to continue this conversation on Tron Legacy with some of the dislikes that we had about the film, because there were some downsides to it. There's some things that just didn't work out. So that's what were some things you just did not care for. Um, They left some story plots just like dangling. Mm-hmm. Like they're like, hey, there's a thing, and just left it and mm-hmm. didn't do anything with it. Right. So I don't know if that was a directorial decision, if there had been more filmed and they just decided to cut it mm-hmm. or what. But like the the kid that was the son of the original bad Thank guy. Thank you. I was going to bring that up. Like they, why have him there mm-hmm. when he's doing nothing? Like he, he does stuff. Right. But he's part of the company. He's part of the company. But they never like mention him past the first maybe 10 minutes right i'm like was that just a nod if it was it was kind of a bad one Mm -hmm. like and you you get the impression that he's a jerk and we shouldn't like him but then nothing else happens yeah that's probably my biggest thing was that you have this weird stuff in the front end and when when you introduce a character like that in the first act especially the way they introduced him yeah where he's like he's in the meeting he's doing stuff he has several lines in the first several bit of the movie, you're like, okay, you know, does he have a program within the uh, the new mm-hmm. network? What's happening? And like, so you just he just disappears. Yeah, nothing comes of him later. Do you think? And I, it's been so long since I've watched it. I'm gonna have to go back and watch it. Maybe viewers, listeners, if you're if you're listening, there was a animated series called Tron Uprising. Yeah. And I can't I can't remember where in the timeline it plays out. I know it deals with the um oh what do you call them? Oh, you're talking about the new life forms. Mm-hmm. Uh what were they called? Uh the ISOs. Right, ISOs. I know it deals with some of them, but I, I don't know where in the timeline it is. So if you guys are listening, reach out to us on any of our social media networks. Let us know if you guys remember what the when when Tron Uprising takes place, which I remember enjoying quite a bit when I watched it years ago, but I'm, I'm wondering if his character pops up in or his program mm. pops up in that or not, or if he was supposed to be this was supposed to be one of those we're setting up for another movie beyond this, and it just hasn't happened yet. Mm-hmm. 
um, which I don't think it is going to happen. I mean, I think we have a better shot of getting another alien movie before we do another <laughs> Tron. <laughs> probably so. Probably so. So what else did you not care for? Um, I feel like the the whole beginning portion was setting you up to have this strife and this malcontent with the company that mm-hmm. had been taken over when Jeff Bridges left. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just fell flat. Like you really don't focus any of it. It really wasn't necessary with anything that happened in the story later on. It, it kind of sort of did some world building. Mm-hmm. Um, but they could have legitimately just left it with he left as a kid and then gone to the scene where Alan was talking to him and telling him about the page. Right. Like they, they could have cut that whole thing out. All it really did was show that the kid was good with a bike. Mm-hmm. Really? That was it. <laughs> like, but I feel like we didn't necessarily need to, we could have like seen him driving up home on a bike and they could have achieved that in like five minutes. Right. I don't know. There, there, there's some storytelling elements that just, they kind of fell. Yeah. And I think they sacrificed some of it for the graphics mm. or the, the beauty. Cause it was a beautiful film. Oh, it opinion. was gorgeous. Um, I felt like the pacing was off at times too. Like you just had this, but the first one had some pacing issues too. <sighs> yes. But I feel like they were more consistent than this one. And where the pacing fell off for me was when you actually went to, um, um, Jeff Bridges scenes. Hmm. I think that he's so chill and out there <laughs> that it just breaks the flow of everything. That's possible. And that could just be Jeff Bridges. That could just be Jeff Bridges. <laughs> so, but the whole thing of like combining again with Clue and all sorts of stuff, there was just, there was an awkwardness to all that aspect mm-hmm. of it. Um, so that was, that was a lot of my issues I have. Again, a beautiful film. Oh yeah. Just some of the storytelling elements were off. I, I did want more, which is why I watched the series. Right. Um, I wish there was more. Yeah. So it was it was definitely interesting. I would want more of the world, like what happened in the middle of the time frame between when Jeff Bridges got trapped and when his Sam shows up. Yeah. Like there's there's that whole time frame that you have that is would be fascinating to me because you have the ISOs, you have that whole thing right? that would be an intriguing story to tell. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't necessarily go beyond that. (laughs) Yep. So any other last last thoughts on the film itself before we give our kind of final rating and our just general thoughts period about everything involved with it? I think I'm good. Yeah. I'm again, it's, I don't know I'm, I'm left kind of going, is this a great film or not? I enjoyed, I enjoyed some of the conversation it brings up about mm-hmm. life and creation and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. And, and allowing creation to, to do its thing. There is an aspect about, um, the, a created item going bad mm. and, um, and some of that, and, but the difference is like, there's obviously a difference between us as created beings and God giving us free will to create right. and to be versus this, um, this construct of man going, I'm giving you every possibility. You have to do this one track thing. There is no opportunity for things to not be perfect and it be perfect. And that was the difference. Yeah. Clue was going, I will create perfect if I have to create tyranny. But Flynn's thing was, no, man, perfect is much more than that. It's sloppy. It's messy. Yeah. And I think we see that in creation itself is perfect. The perfection in God's eyes, there is some sloppiness and some messiness, at mm-hmm. least in the process of getting there. Um, well, and even in in just generality, if you think about it in the respect of art, some of the most beautiful and most renowned art is a hot mess. Oh, yeah. Like it's paint that's not following lines and it's, it's images that are not clear. They're, mm-hmm. they're blurry, but it's because of how the artist intended it to be. Sure. So creation 
has some blurriness and has some what we think is sloppiness, but when you pull back, it's really beautiful. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. It's the whole picture versus just the small yeah. m- minor details. Yeah, yeah. You know, w- we did a series at our church years ago called Threads and mm-hmm. talking about how you have all these nasty little pieces when you're up close. You're like, man, I wish this was here. But when you pan back, you have this beautiful image of who Jesus is. And in our lives, you have all these nasty parts. But when you pan back, you see the beautiful work of Christ in your life. Yeah. And where you are at today versus yesterday, how it all has come together. Yeah. And so um, you can kind of pull some of those those conversations from this. Oh, yeah. Um, but is the film good? Is it worth watching? I'd say it's worth watching. Mm-hmm. It was entertaining and it's beautiful. The, the cinematography and the music alone make it worth watching. Mm-hmm. The storytelling, it's okay. Yeah. But just because it's such a beautiful movie, it's not one you're wa- if you're wanting a deep movie if you're wanting intense storytelling (laughs) if you're wanting something like that if you want something like that go watch lord of the rings right but (laughs) if you want to watch something that's just pretty right and has beautiful music to it yeah then go watch tron legacy absolutely all right well i'm kind of in the same boat again um it's pretty it's fun the music is great it's if you just have time to kill, yeah, watch it. It's not boring. Mm-mm. There's just some plot holes. Exactly. So love to hear from you guys, though. Let us know your thoughts. Did you enjoy it? Did you not like it? Uh, reach out to us on our social media net, uh, networks. Um, you need to get some announcements real quick. Yeah. Some stuff coming down the pipeline. Coming down the pipeline. So one of which is here in a few weeks, we're going to be launching a brand new podcast on a separate RSS feed. Yes. Called The Bottom Shelf, where we're going to be looking at movies the people say are terrible, and we're going to decide, are they really terrible or not? Yes. And uh, I'm really excited about it. We have um, Josh. Uh, not Josh. Oof. John. <laughs> I mean, we could pull Josh We could onto pull that Josh, podcast. but we have John uh, from Primitive Run the Machine. And uh, then we also have Kevin, the Dapper Man himself. Yes. And uh, and myself. And then you're going to be coming on every so often. Yeah. To talk about some really crazy movies. I make no, no promises, though. <laughs> it's said every so often. Every so often. So I'm just letting the listeners know that I I do not enjoy the not great movies as much as some people in the group do. <laughs> so I will not be subjecting myself to all of them. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. So we've got that coming out of the pipeline. Super excited about it. Hope you guys uh, enjoy it. We'll have some more information come out as it comes to us. So what else should we announce or talk about? Um, starting in October, which as of the release of this will be Friday. Yeah. Yeah, Friday. We are going to be doing Fangtober. Yeah. Which is where we are talking about vampires all month long. All month long. So super excited about that um, because I like vampires. (laughs) Like that sounds ridiculous, but I enjoy a good vampire thing. Mm -hmm. You would think with my distaste for horror that I would not be into vampires. Right. But I've seen a lot of really good vampire movies that are not like horror. They're just intense. Right. Or straight out funny. Yeah. Like Buffy, the movie and the series. <laughs> the series was intense, but it it also dealt with a lot of other stuff. Right. So. It did indeed. So, all right. Well, we got all that coming down. Also, one last big announcement. Uh, October 8th. Is that the right date? Yes. October that is 8th. the correct date. We're going to have a special daytime stream on our Twitch channel where I'm going to be playing uh, Metroid Dread which is the newest Metroid uh, game. It's, and uh, I'm excited to play it. We, yeah. we pre-ordered it. So what's going to happen is I'll be picking it up about 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. From my, that's when the store opens. That's when the store opens. And I'm going to grab it, come straight home. Hopefully I'll have some stuff set up, ready to go. And uh, we're going to fire it up, stream. We're probably going to stream until about 3.30, 4 o'clock. Uh, and I'm going to do a, a review. Yeah. And we'll have it edited up on YouTube by Friday. Or by Saturday morning. So that is the plan. I'd uh, love to have you guys stop by and hang out. And the plan is for us just to stream it, play, uh, see how it goes. And then just give an honest review. Is it worth you guys picking up or not? 
Yeah. So uh, this is partially funded by our amazing devoted Patreon geeks. And um, because you guys help us to get the content that we need to create content. (laughs) To create the content you want to see. Yeah. So if you want to become a devoted Patreon geek, I want to encourage you to check our website, patreon.com. Uh, forward slash geek devotions or go to our website geekdevotions.com forward slash support where you can find out other ways to support us we did have a new devoted patreon geek uh actually an upgrade but michael Minacci, and we yeah. super appreciate him and with his particular tier of support uh we will be doing reviews mm-hmm. on uh books or movies that he's specifically suggesting to us and that's again that's just one of the reward reward points that yeah. is there uh we, that's that the, the tier yeah so if you guys are like hey I want you guys to review certain things, then you got to sign up for that particular tier. We have other tiers where you can do other stuff. So check that out. We have all kinds of rewards. Mm-hmm. So I think that's all the announcements. I think we're good. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to Calm Talk today. If you have loved this episode, head on over to Apple Podcasts to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It is very much appreciated. So until next time, stay devoted. Peace and love. Peace and love.